Hello Lava friends, after introducing you to Lava Pulse in this last video, this one is about creating your own first custom card. This is a big part of Pulse, providing you with all the tools to make it as simple as possible to customize the dashboard to your personal needs. Here is what we're going to build in this video, a little Rocket League high score card. Is this something that you all are going to need? Maybe, could be but for sure you're going to learn everything that you need to know. So let's get started. We're here at the official documentation for Laravel Pulse and this is the section for custom cards, so exactly what we need. So here you're going to see what needs to be done in order to create a custom card. So we need a LifeWire component here, extending the card class here from Laravel Pulse. Then we're returning a plate file similar to all of our components. And then in the plate file, this is an example with where a lot of plate components from level pulse are being used. And then at the end, let's scroll down here. Yeah, we're just going to add this to our pulse dashboard. So let's give this a try. I'm creating another live wire component using here the level idea plugin. If you don't know that and our card should be named again it should be about our rocket league wins so let's call it rocket league wins card and we also want to put it inside a pulse directory all right let's see we're here on a live web pulse here we have our card component and i always like here to add the view contract as a return type all right so what's going on next here we're turning here this plate component and here's our plate component and let's just say hello here, just as an example. And then inside our Pulse dashboard, we go here. Let's bring in our Rocket League wins card like this. We're also going to provide calls R6 and Rosa 2. And let's take a look. So currently we almost don't see it because here is our hello. And also the rows and columns are not working because we're not using this. So let's take a look at the documentation again. And let's copy this example here. We're already using the plate components. And now let's call this here. Let's give this a title. Rocket League wins. And as you can see here at the top, we're using the pulse card component. And now this utilizes the columns and the rows. So this should now work. Here's the icon, which we don't use yet. And here is a scroll section similar to some other pulse cards that you already have seen. All right, let's refresh. And it's not working. Let's see, I uh, think, yeah. So we forgot to extend the pulse live wire card. We don't need this live wire component class here. And now let's refresh and here we go. We got here our first new custom card here. We got this title. These dots come from the icon, which we're not using. And this is from the content, which we also haven't defined. But yeah, basically that's it. From here on, you can just bring in here anything you like and you will see this on your level Pulse dashboard. So this is the front end part of the whole custom card story. And this one is pretty easy. Again, you have live art component and you have your plate component and you can utilize a lot of those Pulse X Pulse components, Pulse live wire components. All right, but mostly you don't have just some static stuff. Maybe you also want to record stuff similar to how Pulse is doing this for all those other components here. So for these ones, so how are those working? So here are a few things that you need to know and then we can use them ourselves. So let's start again. Let's go to the Pulse configuration and here we have our records. So this is how we're going to record all the data for the given level Pulse cards. And this is the one for cache interactions, by the way. Again, this is um, crossed out because this is only for internal use. That's why you see this here. But yeah, this means here we have a cache interactions recorder. And if we take a look at this recorder here, which is just a basic class, not extending anything. And here are two things that are very important. First, the listen array, listen property, where we're going to define when this recorder is being triggered. And we have two events here for cache hit and cache missed. So whenever those are being triggered, we come to this class here and this, then this record method, which you also use, need to use, is going to be triggered. And here the most important stuff is this part here. So what we're doing here is we are telling Pulse to record some data. And here we define which key it is. Is it a cache hit and a cache miss? 
then a specific key here and a timestamp. And then we're also telling Laravel Pass that we want to capture the count aggregate. And then through every request, those recordings may happen. And then at the end of the request, Pulse is storing those in database. So it's a good idea to take a look at the database as well. So we have here three tables that are important, Pulse aggregates, Pulse entries, and Pulse values. Well, values is something that you probably don't need that often for, so just some static data that you want to have here. For example, for my system, I renamed my machine, my computer to the machine, and this name is being stored here. More interesting for us are the Pulse entries. You can see I have here already a lot of entries from the examples that I've shown you in the last videos. Slow job, so here the type is very interesting, user request, and so on. And here, basically, we are storing what has happened. So a slow request has happened, a user request has happened. And then the key in this example for the user request is the user ID. And then we also have the aggregates where we're going to combine those entries that had happened and then adding them up together for specific time periods, which we have on our dashboard for we're here at six hours, one hours, 24 hours and seven days. So this is what we get from the aggregates table. Okay, so how do we want to store or retrieve the data for a Rocket League wins? We already have here Rocket League win event. So this event is being um, dispatched whenever one of the team member wins a Rocket League game. This means the only thing missing here is that we need to record this. So we need our own recorder. So here under app pulse recorders, I'm going to create a new class and we're calling, we're going to call this Rocket League league wins recorder and again we don't need to extend any other class we just need a public array called listen and here we can define what we want to listen for and in our case we want to listen for the rocket league win event but that's the first very important part and the second one here is we need a record method now inside this method we are going to record what has happened so the first parameter is the type. In our case, we're going to call this, this is a rocket leak win, which happened. The second is the key. In our case, the key is the user. So inside our record method, we are receiving our event, the event that we were listening for. And on this event, we have a user ID, which we pass in here. And last, we have the value, which in our case is just uh, the number one, meaning that one win has happened. So now that we have our recorder, let's put it into the recorder's configuration array here, which is the key and the value is an empty array where we could define some more data, but we don't need this for now. All right, in order to test this, I've created a trigger rocket leak win command where we actually just triggering our event of a specific user ID. So if I run now PHP artisan, rocket leak trigger win for the user with the id1 this is now finished now we should see an entry in the database let's go up here look for the most recent one and yeah here we have it rocket leak win one and also of course we already got aggregates for those and we also should see it here in pulse aggregates but we don't have it here Let's take a look. What did we forget? Yeah, I think we forgot here the count method, which again, we are telling that we want to capture count aggregates, which we do. So let's run our command again. And yeah, now we got those entries here for one hour, six hours, 24 hours, and six or seven days. All right, perfect. So this means whenever this event is happening, we're now going to store it in the pulse tables for entries and aggregates. So this means now we can use this data inside our LiveWire component. So in order to get our wins, we can use now the disaggregate method. And the type we're looking for again is called rocket leak win. And we're looking for the count, which is the aggregate. Let's see if this already works. And we can see it here with a key, which is the user ID and the count, which is one. Okay, perfect. But since we're looking for something very similar to what we here in the have in the application usage, this kind of list of users and how many wins they 
the user already has, we can do something very similar. So level pass already has a method we can use, which is called resolve users. And we can use the plug method on our wins on the, on the key. And then let's check out this as well. What do we see here now? We now see a illuminate collection. Let's make it this a little bigger. And we should see here now one user, which is me. So this also works. So this will also work if we have more entries, we would get more users here. So now that we have our users, we want to map our wins and I just paste this in here. So what we're doing here, we're mapping over our wins and we want to keep the key as the key, but for the user now we want to select and find the right user with the key of the row from our users collection here. And we still want to have the count. And now we're passing this to our live wire blade file and let's call this wins. And now we should have access to this data. Now inside here, we're going to make a for each loop. And for every win, we want to see here user and we can also utilize a pulse user card. We need to provide a wire key which is our key. And then we also need to provide a user and we need the colon here and the user we get from our win user like this. And this should already be enough to see a user card. Let's try this out. And of course, this is not a method. This is a property. Let's try it out. And voila, here we see me as the first user who wins one of the Rocket League games. Now we can make this a little bit prettier. So for example, here we can use an icon. Let's use this one for rocket launch. I think this fits quite well. Yes, it does. Nice. And now we also want to see here on the side how many wins I have. Just call X slot stats. And here we're just providing from our win the count. And here you can see we now have the count. Nice. So I think that's a good idea to bring in some more data. So let's run our trigger comment now again for the user with the ID two, three, four. Let's take a look now. As you can see here, yeah, now we get in here some more users. And let's also make this a little bit smaller here so that we can see it a little bit better now. And we can see here that it looks a little bit better here because here we're using a crit. So let's do this as well. Let's take a look at the usage blade component. And here we are, here we are using a crit. So let's do this as well for our little example here. So right before our for each loop and we're closing it after it. And now let's take a look. Yeah, this looks much better now. Rocket League wins. And now the last thing that we're going to do here is I'm going to call my seed command seed pulse command here. So what this does, it, it sees the database. Yeah, we have quite a lot of data so that we see more on the dashboard. And if we now take a look here, yeah, you can see we get some more results in here. And as you can see also, the high score now is a little bit more like it probably would be in real where Taylor is winning all the games and we're just way behind him. You have seen that every Pulse card is just a Livewire component that you add to the dashboard file. You are free to put everything in there that fits your personal needs, but Pulse provides you with an excellent way to store and retrieve data from the database for your cards. Give it a try yourself and make sure to check out the official docs as well. Please have fun creating your own custom cards and please let me know about them in the comments. See you in the next video. Bye.